Oxidation and reduction reactions are the subject of this podcast. Let's start with the reaction that um, we began the year with via a demo. Magnesium metal is reacted with the oxygen in the air and we had that spectacular bright white explosion or light being given off. We have the reaction summarized here and we're going to focus on the two elements involved in this change. So first of all, let's start with the magnesium. Magnesium as an element, well, earlier in the year we learned that all elements in their elemental state are neutral. So magnesium as a reactant has a charge of zero. On the product side, we can see that magnesium is in a compound and so we go back to our formula writing and we remember that magnesium forms ions because it is an alkaline metal, alkaline earth metal, of uh, plus two. So the charge on magnesium is plus two. So the question is, how did that occur? How did magnesium go from a charge of zero where protons and electrons are equal to a plus two charge where protons and electrons aren't equal. The magnesium lost what? Two electrons. Conversely, at the other end of the spectrum, we have oxygen. Oxygen is a reactant, O2, initially because it's an element, its charge is zero. But in the compound state, the oxygen had a charge in the magnesium oxide of a charge of minus two. So oxygen goes from zero to minus two. The oxygen gained two electrons. What is characteristic of all redox reactions is that there is an electron transfer. One substance loses electrons and another substance gains electrons. To simplify this, if we remember that loss of electrons is always oxidation and gain of electrons is always reduction, we might say, in keeping with our school mascot, that Leo the lion says grrr. So how do we look at the demonstration, the balanced equation that shows a demo that we did the other day where we put potassium metal into water? How do we decide which element gained electrons and which element lo loses the electrons? In order to accomplish this, we have to figure out what is a substance's oxidation number. So for each compound or each element, or each ion, we're going to assign an oxidation number for every single element in a reaction. Every single element. Okay, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six rules to remember. Most of them are pretty easy, you already know them. The first one is that elements have an oxidation number of zero. Okay, that's true. Any element has an equal number of protons and electrons. Protons equaling electrons. That makes sense. Second rule. If you have a single atom ion, monatomic ion, then the charge on the ion is its oxidation number. Third rule, the oxidation number of oxygen is minus two in most compounds. That's true. When oxygen is in a compound, we have said that its charge is minus two. And for hydrogen, the oxidation number is plus one. Now look at these last two rules and you'll see that the sum of the oxidation numbers for neutral compounds equals zero and for ions it equals the charge on the polyatomic ion. So let's take those rules and apply them to the following list of elements and compounds and ions. So if we look at the elements that are listed here so magnesium, it is an element. How do I recognize it as an element? Well, there's no charge shown. If we had magnesium metal, we would know it's a solid. Its oxidation number, since it's an element, is zero. And the same applies to hydrogen. 
Hydrogen, though, is diatomic. It still has an oxidation number of zero because it is in the elemental state. Now, if we look at hydrogen and oxygen in water, I do know that there are two hydrogens. And if I multiply that by the oxidation number of hydrogen plus the oxidation number of oxygen, they will add up to equal the charge on the compound, which is zero. This goes back to our formula writing. We've already done this. What's the oxidation of hydrogen? Plus one. What's the oxidation number of oxygen? Minus two. The sum of these equals zero. Let's move to the next one. Sodium, what's the charge of sodium ions? Oh, we did this already. Sodium is plus one, the char and there's only one sodium ion. Chloride ion is minus one, the sum of those equals zero. Let's do carbon dioxide. I do know that the sum of all the oxidation numbers in carbon dioxide have to add up to equal zero. I'm gonna put zero on one side of the equal sign. And I do know the oxidation number of oxygen, but I don't know the oxidation number of carbon. Since there are two oxygens, I do know that two times minus two, the oxidation number of oxygen, is the total oxidation number on the oxygens. But what I don't know is what is the oxidation number of carbon. Solving for x, I come up with a value of x equal to plus four. Before we go any farther, let's see if you can figure out the oxidation numbers on the sodium, the nitrogen, and the oxygen in this compound. Pause for a moment, and then when you come back on, you'll see the answer posted. The oxidation number on the nitrogen is the one that we don't know. We know sodium is plus one. We know oxygen is minus two. Put that into our equation. We can solve the oxidation number of the nitrogen is plus five. Now let's try a different polyatomic ion over here. Let's try the sulfate ion. Since it's an ion, I know that the total charge has to equal minus two instead of zero. Since for ions, that's the rule. Since I have four oxygens, they're each an oxidation number of minus two, and only one sulfur, the oxidation number on the sulfur has to be plus six. Did you get that? I'm gonna write the oxidation numbers for each of the elements in this reaction. See if you can follow along with me. If I go a little bit too fast, you might wanna pause the podcast and try to figure out the oxidation numbers yourself. On the reactant side, we have potassium has an oxidation number of zero because it's an element. Hydrogen is always plus one, and oxygen is almost always minus two when it's in compounds. On the product side of the reaction, you can see that potassium ion is formed. So the potassium has a charge or an oxidation number of plus one. The oxygen is in a polyatomic ion, and oxygen is almost always, whether it's in compounds or ions, minus two. In the hydroxide, the hydrogen is plus one. But in the hydrogen that is part of H2, it is in its elemental state, and that hydrogen has an oxidation number of zero. If you look at these reactions, you can identify the fact that one of these substances, the potassium, has changed from zero to plus one, and we would, and the 
hydrogen has changed from positive 1 to 0. So, how do we figure out what's going on? Well, potassium has gone from 0 to plus 1. How did it do that? It was from a loss of electrons. In this case, 1. Hydrogen goes from positive 1 to 0. It had to have gained electrons. So, we can say that potassium was oxidized and we can say that hydrogen is reduced. One is oxidized and one is reduced. That is the key for figuring out whether the reaction is oxidation reduction. It is. It is indeed an oxidation reduction reaction. In this problem from your text, let's make a list again. On the reactant side, the zinc has an oxidation number of zero because it is in the elemental state. The nitrogen, we're going to have to figure out that's a little bit more complicated. Take a time, pause it. It turns out the oxidation number of nitrogen is plus five. The oxygen on the reactant side is minus 2. Oxygen's usually minus 2. And the hydrogen is, oh, the charge, it's, it's the same as the charge, plus 1. On the product side, we see that zinc has gone from, on the reactant side, being neutral to having an oxidation number of plus 2. So we can say that zinc metal was oxidized. It gained electrons. Zinc was oxidized and going from neutral element to zinc ions. You have to have reduction if you have oxidation. They, the two go hand in hand. You cannot have one without the other. So let's figure out what other element was well, if uh, zinc was oxidized, probably something else was reduced. Let's look at the oxidation numbers of the other elements present. Oxygen is always minus 2. Hydrogen is almost always plus 1. Nitrogen. Well, in this compound, which is a neutral compound, the oxidation number of nitrogen is 4. Why is it plus 4? Well, oxygen has an oxidation number of minus 2. There are two of them. In order to figure out the oxidation number of nitrogen, I know that since it's a compound, the oxidation number adds up to 0. That would give me having nitrogen have an oxidation number of 4. So in summary, zinc was oxidized and nitrogen was reduced. That means, means that zinc lost the electrons. How did zinc lose the electrons? Well, nitrogen gained them. So the last bit of information has to do with an, something called an oxidizing agent and a reducing agent. It turns out that an agent, just like a real estate agent, facilitates the, the selling of a home. Well, an oxidizing agent, which is the case for the nitrate ion, it allowed zinc to be oxidized. If I put nitrate ion in with zinc, an oxidation of zinc occurs. So it is the agent that allowed zinc to be oxidized. Conversely, the reducing agent itself is oxidized, but what it does is allow the reducing agent of zinc allows the nitrogen in the nitrate ion to be reduced. So don't be confused. The reducing agent itself has an element that is always oxidized, and the oxidizing agent has an element in it that is always reduced.